So in typical me fashion, I decided I hadn't made a really controversial video in a long time. And this topic has repeatedly come up in discussion in the K-pop realm recently, so I decided I would throw in my two cents. This video, as you can obviously tell by the title, is a discussion on noise music brought to you by me and the negative effects I think it has on K-pop. Before we get into the video, I have to give you all the warnings right now. I don't even think I can call these disclaimers because that word implies that what I'm about to say is flexible, and it's not. Number one, I am here to discuss some very controversial opinions about music. I know that this topic is already heavily debated amongst K-pop stands, and a lot of people subscribe to the idea that music is subjective and there is no bad music. I'm here to tell you that I disagree with that. I think that there is music that is objectively bad. And I am not here to tell you you're not allowed to like bad music. You can do whatever you want and I can't stop you. But I'm not going to be that person that pats you on the back and validates all of your favorite types of music. Number two, this video is about my opinion. I am not taking in the perspective of other people when discussing noise music. These are my opinions and if you want to voice yours, make your own video. I am not here to give you a platform for your own thoughts. This is about me, myself, and I. Whether or not you agree or disagree with me is entirely up to you. Number three, this is my channel, which means this is a dictatorship, not a democracy. You are not entitled to freedom of speech. Therefore, if you leave any sort of hate comment under this video, it will be deleted and you will be blocked. I am open to disagreement so long as you aren't a dick about it. And lastly, the title is not clickbait. I am going to be talking about exactly what it says. You might be wondering why I'm being so intense about these warnings, and that is because I don't want any of you to have any misconceptions about what this video is. This is a controversial topic. If you disagree with the opinions I state in this video, I'm warning you, I am going to piss you off. So if you know you are someone who does not agree with this opinion, and you do not want to hear the takes of somebody who disagrees with you, I would click off this video right now. I'll give you three seconds. Now if you're still here, I assume you want to know what I have to say, so enough warnings and let's talk about it. Also, I am going to name drop specific songs in specific groups. Just because I criticize a group's music does not mean I hate them. This is not a critique of any of these groups as people, it's a critique of the music they make. There have undeniably been bad trends in music throughout every generation of K-pop. If you go back and listen to some of the most popular songs from the second gen, you will hear some of the most atrocious music ever made. However, from the beginning of the third gen to the beginning of the fourth gen, we were experiencing a renaissance, if that's what you want to call it. If you ask any random K-pop stand the best year for K-pop, they'll probably tell you 2018, 2016, 2015. Most people will probably tell you that the best year for K-pop was somewhere between the years of 2013 and 2018. This five-year span was extremely pivotal for K-pop too. We started to see the Hallyu wave really taking off, and a lot of the most famous K-pop groups and soloists of all time either debuted or were in their peak during this era. There were so many iconic K-pop songs released like TT, Fire, Doo 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 Doo, Red Flavor, Call Me Baby, Megusas 2, and more. These songs undeniably shaped K-pop into what it is today and still maintain longevity, which is something a lot of songs post-2018 lack. And with today's topic, arguably the best part of these songs, whether you love them or not, is that most people love them from the very first listen. It didn't take a week or two or three for the song to grow on you. It didn't take 5,000 listens for you to like this song. You listened to it and your love for the song was automatic. Post-2018, finding a song like that is rare because of the rise in noise music. Now, I'm not a producer of any sort, and I really hate when K-pop stands throw around words related to production and pretend they know what they're talking about. This is just a take I call put together based on my opinions and my knowledge of music and K-pop. Proceed with caution, I am not a professional and I never claim to be, so don't get pissy at me for not having a master's. Noise music, as you all probably know by now, is a hotly debated topic. I've talked about my feelings regarding noise music before, and people always get upset because they automatically assume I'm talking about all EDM music because that's typically the building block of noise music. To be honest, I think most of you do this on purpose so you can discredit what I'm saying because I stand groups who release EDM music so clearly I don't think all of it is bad. To me, noise music is not one specific genre of music. Maybe other people don't define it that way, but I believe noise music and K-pop to be songs that lack cohesiveness, have tons of badly written and poorly executed raps, and usually have themes of EDM, electropop, or hip-hop. It can be any genre, but it's usually those. We can all point to plenty of songs that fit this description, i.e. Why Not by Luna, Hot Sauce by NCT Dream, Next Level by Espa, Side Effects by Stray Kids, and plenty of others. You'll notice how all of these songs were released post-2018, which begs the question of when did noise music really take off? Many of us associate noise music with the fourth gen, which undeniably popularized the sound. But when did we see the switch from the third gen sound we had all become familiar with to this sound that characterized is K-pop as of recent years. In my personal opinion, I think this shift in sound can be credited to ITZY. ITZY debuted right at the beginning of 2019, and their debut song Dala Dala was undeniably sounds like the noise music we're all familiar with. 
In 2018, when the first fourth gen groups were debuting, their sound sounded very reminiscent of third gen groups. Promise 9, G Idol, ATs, Luna, Gongwon Sonyo, Aizwon, all of their debuts sound drastically different from the sound we associate with fourth gen music today. ITZY was the first group from the fourth gen we saw with this sound that was really successful, and after the success of Dala Dala, I think a lot of groups decided to adopt this sound. As I said in the beginning, there is a lot of debate around this kind of music. Some people say they love it, other people absolutely despise it. A good amount of K pop stands argue that K-pop has been going downhill since noise music became popular, and this is true in a sense. There is undeniably a lot less hype around K-pop domestically than there has been in recent years. The Korean general public is not listening to idol music nearly as much as they used to, and plenty of articles on forums have gone viral in the past two to three years discussing the lack of promising rookie K-pop groups. There was a clear disinterest in K-pop on a domestic level, and part of it ties into the noise music we're seeing now. And so now, if I haven't made you angry by name dropping your favorite group or song already, I'm definitely going to piss you off now, so here goes. My hot take is that I believe most of you are lying about liking noise music. Pause for booing. Either you're lying about it because you're too embarrassed to admit that you don't like the music your faves make, or noise music has just rotted your brain to the point where you don't realize that you don't have to listen to a song 30 times to like it. Like at this point in time, not having to let a song quote unquote grow on you is extremely rare. Every comeback from a fourth gen group you all are talking about, oh I didn't like it the first time but it grew on me. And out of context, a statement like this wouldn't be weird. Maybe on the first listen, it didn't really hit right, but the second or third, you begin to like it. But because this is K-pop, I know you all aren't listening to it once or twice more after the first listen. It's been played at least 50 times before you could tolerate the song. And it's gotten to the point where you all are so deep into this noise music trend that you can't even recognize when a song is just bad. I shit you not, I saw somebody call Savage by Espa quote unquote performative cringe when somebody said it was a bad song. And at first, I thought they were joking. Like this tweet was so bad that there's no way that this person could possibly be serious. And then I go to the quote retweets and check the replies and there are people unironically saying, oh my god, I've been saying this forever, or implying that this song is super highbrow and you have to be really smart to quote unquote get it. And this is the perfect example of how noise music is absolutely rotting your brains. What the fuck are you all even saying anymore? Do you all not realize how you're running around in circles trying to avoid calling these songs bad? And shit like this just proves even more that 99% of you do not actually like this kind of music. Because if you genuinely enjoyed noise music, you wouldn't have to make up terms like performative cringe or say things like it grew on me after a week or two. If you genuinely liked noise music, you'd just say that. You wouldn't be like, no, no, guys, the song is supposed to be bad on purpose, you just don't get it. There is such a small portion of people out there who actually like these songs and they're not just saying it because they listen to it 10 million times. And these people will say that they like the music, they don't have to make up a bunch of reasons why the song is quote unquote technically good. Like I would literally just unstand if I had to convince myself to like a song every time my favorite group released something the way most of you all do. And this type of music just reinforces something that I've been saying for a while now, which is that the K-pop industry does not respect rap as a genre. Which is unsurprising because when have they ever respected black culture, but this style of music becoming popular just proves it even more. K-pop companies do not think that there is any skill or talent required to be a rapper, hence why they make all of the weakest singers in a group into the main and lead rappers. It's also why so many idols get on these tracks with horrible beats and just make the song even worse when they open their mouths. Hot take, but it's bordering on offensive how little respect for the art of rapping is displayed in these songs. 99% of these raps have no rhythm, shitty lyricism, and don't rhyme. And that's the type of rapping you all prefer. Then again, most people who genuinely like K-pop rapping across the board are people who haven't listened to much or any actual rap. There are exceptions to this rule though, aka BTS's rap line, but for the most part, K-pop rapping sucks. So how does noise music really affect K-pop? I mentioned earlier that the Korean GP has been losing interest in idol groups for a while now, but that's also due to a lot of different factors. So what's happening in the K-pop industry that's being negatively affected by noise music? Number one, less longevity and fewer and fewer groups who aren't from bigger companies getting their breakout moment. While noise music is a huge trend amongst the fourth gen right now, you'll notice that there are very few groups seeing tangible success with this sound. As popular as the trend is in the realm of K-pop, noise music is only tolerated from certain groups, mostly big three, by the GP. The amount of groups with this sound entering real-time charts can be counted on one hand. There have been fewer 
and fewer groups getting their breakout moment. The majority of these noise music songs will be forgotten about within the year, buried by the releases of groups way bigger than them. Number two, the quality of vocals is going way down. As I said earlier, a lot of these songs are heavily rap based and it's really bad rapping. And contrary to popular belief, I don't think fourth gen singers are inherently worse like most people speculate. I think that fourth gen idols have just as much potential as third and second gen to be good singers, but these idols are being told way more nowadays to focus on rapping which takes the focus off of being a good vocalist. These songs are also pretty heavily dance based which pushes singing even further to the back. Being good at singing is almost becoming optional at this point. Number three, the number of new K-pop stands is beginning to plateau. This sort of relates to my first point. We're getting to the point where recent K-pop music is becoming so difficult to digest that even seasoned K-pop fans who have heard some really messy music in their day are finding fourth gen music insufferable. And to someone who is trying to get into K-pop, encountering all of this noisy, clashy music is just off-putting. And I know some of you are typing out comments about, OMG, Western validation doesn't matter, blah blah blah, but like like I said, the interest in K-pop is decreasing domestically too for the same reason. Like I don't think it's too much to ask for these groups to put out music that doesn't give me a headache, and there are groups who are doing that that you all call generic. Both BTS and Red Velvet's releases this year were deemed generic by most K-pop stands, but these are songs I would absolutely recommend to people trying to get into K-pop. They're fun, lighthearted, and catchy, and they don't take 30 listens for you to like them. I'm not going to recommend Savage or Sticker to a person interested in K-pop and send them running for the hills. Like I said, these types of songs are very difficult to digest even as a seasoned K-pop stan. And fourth and final, music is becoming less enjoyable. As I've said a million times already, it should not take several listens for you to begin to like a song. And a lot of you are becoming so used to shoving a song down your throat that liking a song from the jump isn't even something you all recognize. I said this over on Patreon in my comeback review for September, but Stereotype by Stacey took me by surprise recently because it is the only fourth gen song I have listened to in a long time that I liked immediately. It took me one listen and I was obsessed. I play it on a loop endlessly now because I want to, not because I'm trying to convince myself to like the song. Whether we realize it or not, this trend of noise music has drastically affected our listening experience and convinces people that after you listen to a song an obscene amount of times, you'll finally like it, which is true in most cases. The first two weeks after Next Level was released, you all hated it and now everybody's calling it song of the year. But like I said, having to force your brain to tolerate a song isn't actually liking it. And that is the end of this video. I'm fully aware I pissed a lot of you off and I will make full use of the delete and block button if you leave hate. I already know I'm going to get floods of people in my comment section saying shit like, what you said isn't true, I actually like noise music. And to that, I implore you to think more critically. Do you actually like noise music? Or have you been told you should like noise music? Can you say without the influence of other K-pop stands that you wholeheartedly like noise music with no doubts? Can you point to songs like Why Not or Hot Sauce and say this song is good without also saying it's a grower, it's experimental, or something along those lines? Like I said, I know there's a small portion of people out there who genuinely enjoy noise music and don't have to stumble their way through excuses about why they like that sort of music. And honestly, I have more respect for people who genuinely like noise music than those who lie about it. But I digress. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!